Welcome. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and oh, last weekend, huh? How about that weekend? Now, I quit smoking a while back, but if I could get away with it, if not for just one more day, one morning, I would kick back in bed and just stare at the ceiling and ask Toy Fair, was it good for you? Because holy hell, it was good for me! <laughs> there was so much stuff! Our paper to plastic ratio is getting way off kilter. Just paper and plastic and plastic, where are you going? Paper? I need more money? Toys? Money? It's insane. Now, I already did the breakdown for Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series, but there is a couple more things I'm going to add to that real quick. And then I'm going to talk about some other stuff that was at Toy Fair. Not all of it. If you're wanting to see all of our coverage, you can hit the Foosh front page. Look at the pretty pictures, the pretty toys. There's just so much stuff. I mean, look at this list. Usually I have to about right here, and then I can come back at the bottom right here and put it in order. Uh, yeah. Also adding to that list, uh, after I thought I was done for the day Saturday, it was just morning time overseas, and Wonderfest kicked off. Not a lot of news coming out of that, some cool little things, and we'll talk about that after some Toy Fair stuff. Now, during my Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series recap, breakdown, whatever, I forgot to mention that Hasbro did say an Episode 7 Luke is coming. They had it sculpted, and apparently they showed some sculpt. But yeah, excited. I know a lot of people have been asking for this. I need a Luke to go along with my collection, even though he was only... I also forgot to mention the Star-Lord and Ego 2-pack that's coming from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Entertainment Earth is already offering this up, and they will be the first ones to ship it out, but it's not an exclusive. It's a time exclusive, I guess. Peter Quill looks nice. I don't think there's much difference between it and the regular Wave release, except for that he has a Walkman on his belt. And then, of course, Ego, Kurt Russell. Looking pretty good. I don't know what I imagined in my head he would look like. I guess I was imagining Kurt Russell's space on a big planet, but... I don't know. I'm not going to judge before I see the movie. And then the R5-D4 exclusive Black Series Vintage Carded 40th Anniversary 40th? 40th. And then R5-D4 on the Vintage Carding is still an exclusive. We thought it was Entertainment Earth, but apparently it's Think Geek slash GameStop. GameStop exclusive, I guess is cool. I have no Think Geek. I have a couple GameStops. I, I've never hardly seen anything there, but hopefully. But then again, I have the model kit R5-D4, so I don't even know if I'm going to pick this up. But we'll see. I usually talk a big game, but then when I see it in person, it's like, oh, must have. Also, I talked about the Marvel Legends 2-pack, Toys R Us exclusive Cyclops and Dark Phoenix. Promotional pictures showed up right after I finished editing the video. So here are those. I would prefer Cyclops to be on a slightly taller body than the Bucky body, but I'm not going to grab. This looks great. And if I really want it bad enough, I'll put it on a bigger body. So, And then Dark Phoenix. Looking not quite as good as what we've seen before, but I'm still excited about it. Dark Phoenix is Dark Phoenix. And I dig her little power thing, her little firebird on her arm. Now, Bluefin did have a section dedicated to Storm Collectibles at Toy Fair. Both the Mortal Kombat line and the Street Fighter line. Hot Ryu was shown, and then there's the alternate color M. Bison in green. I want to see what the red one's like first before I start fawning over the green one. And then in the Mortal Kombat line it is Shao Kahn and Reptile. We kind of knew Reptile was coming after Scorpion and Sub-Zero. It's just a color swap and then some new accessories, but oh, oh, it looks good. Now I know it's some reuse, but that's like grabbing that you have two different color Lamborghinis. It's like, no, oh, this will not do. I need a new Lamborghini. It's an amazing figure, so reuse is fine. I mean, it takes a lot of other action figures, puts it in a headlock, and walks around like, what? Do something. Shao Kahn is looking amazing. I'm not sure if he comes with the throne. Uh, yeah, I, I would just have to wait and find out. Now, Diamond Select, they showed a few new Marvel Select figures. But most interesting, they announced a backdrop for their next series of Ghostbusters figures. They showed off Vigo the Carpathian and a little Yanosh. And then they said the backdrop for series 6 through 10, I think it is, is going to be the firehouse. I think it's just going to be a front facade. Uh, with the sign sticking out. In this picture you can see it to the side. It's not the sign sticking off the side, it's the side view of the background. It's got some sidewalk to it, and they did say that it's not just the Ghostbusters 2 sign, it'll come with swappable signs. Now Mattel showed uh, a lot of the multiverse figures that they showed last year. I'm not going to go through all of them, there's a, a bunch. King Shark is looking amazing. But what caught my eye was the Batwoman. Much needed character, but the big thing here is they're showing a new body. Double knees, uh, the proportions are a lot better than the old DC Universe Classics female figures. She comes with an alternate head with the short hair, 
just looking great all around. I don't want to get too excited though because Mattel has done this before. Showed us a figure with double joints saying they're going to put a new body out and then that character ended up on the same old stale body. And I say stale, I, I do like the line, I have a bunch of them in tubs that I'm waiting for someday I'll have a big king size room to put all kinds of shelving up and I'll get my DC figures out again. But it's the same body over and over. They've been using it for years and years and years. So to see things like new bodies is exciting. Now they need to follow up on it. Also in the Bluefin booth, the SH Figure Arts Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder was Shrown. I keep saying Shrown. It's like Shredder Shrown. We've seen this a couple times. We saw it last year at San Diego. Uh, I can't remember where else. But this is kind of following the same pattern as the Turtles. The Turtles were shown for at least a good year before they actually released. So hopefully I'll get to San Diego and head straight for the Bluefin booth and hopefully they'll have Shredder for sale. It's looking good, they finally have him standing straight up where you can get a good look at him. Hopefully the helmet is adjustable or something, hopefully it comes down a little bit. I want that brow to be right above the eyes, I want him to look badass. I want him to look like he's terrorizing the turtles. Now Super 7 did show off some Masters of the Universe, a couple of three packs, I'm really interested in the mini comic Trapjaw, and then they showed off four figures from the Filmation line. Hordak, Man-at-Arms, Tila, and Triclops. I'm gonna have to get these. So nostalgic. I was in on the Filmation line from last year. I got all those. I only opened Trapjaw though. The rest are still in the box, but seeing the line continue and look this good, yeah, I'm probably gonna be opening those up, starting a new shelf somewhere. And it was also said that they are still working on the Thundercats license, so fingers crossed there. And then the last thing I'm gonna cover from Toy Fair, NECA. What are you doing? Why are you tempting me like this? I managed to avoid a lot of NECA, don't get me wrong, looks amazing, I'm sure they are great figures, I just look at it from afar. I'm walking down the toy aisle, I look and, oh man, those are nice sculpts, that's a nice paint job. But you put out a Batman, and you put out a Superman, I'm probably gonna bite. Because I have to know what the quality's like, what the figures look like in the collection, I know they're gonna be big, they're gonna be 7 inches, plus the Jokerized Alien. Yeah. Flipping over to Wonder Festival, they didn't show a lot, but I don't know whether to be thankful or disappointed in that. Because, like I said, plastic money! But Bandai did have a booth there for their Star Wars model kits. Nothing new was shown except for a hologram Darth Vader. I don't... I'm, I get it. It's reuse, and it's different, and it looks like candy, and I do want to eat it. I don't know. I don't know if I'll get it, because... How many other Darth Vader's do we have at this point? I don't need a hologram version. It's same with the Mafex, I passed on it. I like the model kit Vader, but not enough to get it in clear blue. Unless somebody gave it to me, that'd be cool. But as you can see in this picture too, the Yoda, the 1 6th version, the big one, the soft robe is soft. They have it all flared out, it looks pretty cool. Hologram Vader is due in May, while Yoda is due in March. Metacom was at the show, they were showing off their Mafex Spider-Man. They released promotional pictures for this uh, a week or so ago looking great. But Mafex, you can't trust the prototypes. <laughs> you can't trust that that's what you're going to get as the final product. But you put a Spider-Man with his leg up like this, I'm sold. I'm going to order it. I'm going to pre-order it. I can't help it. It just looks great. And then they're also showing a Batman Begins Batman. I never got any of the original Mafex Batmans. I was unsure of the quality at the time. But with the current streak of good quality that I've been getting, I may have to get this Batman because I don't have a Begins Batman. Mafex has me by the, at least for now, until Mafex gives me another figure that falls apart in my hands and I'm all just, Mafex, I quit! For the good one that I'm back on. It's like, ah. And now, like I always say, the figure line that splits the community in half. You either hate it or you love it. That's the amazing Yamaguchi line. Rebel Tech, Kyoto. I love the Spider-Man. I really love the Deadpool. Venom's looking awesome, but they're showing a Spider-Gwen. Now, I have no clue who Spider-Gwen is. Like I always say, I haven't read a lot of modern comics. I understand the concept. I've read a little bit of, you know, bio here and there. But I love this design. It's just striking. The pink, the white, the black, the hood, the mask, and then unmasked. Yeah, I like everything about this costume design. So to see it on a Rebel Tech figure, must get. That's, it's just two words. Must get. And also, if you go back to my top five amazing Yamaguchi figures that I would like, Wolverine's on that list. And if you watch that video, when I'm talking about Wolverine, I'm talking about how I would like him to be hunched down and 
crouched and arms and claws out and legs spread and I, I'm pretty much embarrassing myself because there's no flex to this body. Well apparently somebody was listening because look at that! He's posed in the exact pose that I wanted. But I love pictures like this with the no photography sign all over it. And I always wonder how they do it. Do they just walk by and just like, you know, snap. But keeping the sneaky pick train rolling, Figma Deadpool. The teaser for this was shown about a year ago. It was showing the modern Deadpool. I, I, I did read some of that series where he was fighting the dead presidents, but they're showing the prototype for that at Wonder Festival with the whole no photography thing going on. And it's looking, Okay, he looks a little bit scrawny in the chest, a little bit skinny in the thigh, the boots are kind of big, uh, the head's not quite the right size, and they're switching things around. The boot knife is on the wrong side, the holster's on the wrong side, but the leg strap's on the right side. I, I don't understand what you're doing, Figma. But I can gripe all day, and I can say, that doesn't look great, but it's Deadpool. End up ordering it. And then, like the teaser for Deadpool, they also teased a Pokemon Ash. Just in the Deadpool picture from promo to sculpt, yeah, I don't know. So Ash will be interesting to see. I don't feel the need for this because Figure Arts has shown Pokemon figures. And then Figma's not known for really digging deep into a line, so are they just gonna release Ash and that's it? Because the Figure Arts already has Jesse and James, and then Ash. Pikachu and some other Pokemon. But the Deadpool? Now having nothing to do with Toy Fair or Wonder Festival or anything, Hasbro did show new packaging for the Star Wars Episode 8 toys. It's white, it has Rey, hair down. Yeah, interesting and all, but this is just the package my toys come in. This is the cardboard between me and plastic. That's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, great, but whatever. So there you go. It probably went on way longer than I expected it to. I can't help to go, well, that looks great. I sure want that. When does it come out? Oh, so much money. But it's a weekly, and you guys by now expect me to ramble on about it. Now this week is kind of iffy. I'm not even sure if this is going up Wednesday. This may be going up Tuesday, which this will look weird when it does go up, because if it goes up Wednesday, I'm all talking about not knowing when it goes up. And if it goes up Tuesday, I'm still talking about something that may or may not have happened. Just throwing that out there, this week is kind of crazy for me. That's why there was no intro. I'm in and out of the house. Uh, there's some personal things going on. So I'll be back on schedule, hopefully, very, very, very soon. But if you like this Swoosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. I'm looking down like it's really down there. I'm seeing out this little window here, this window. I will catch you on the whoosh.